I don't know. We can keep talking about it. I think you're going to talk yourself out of it by, I don't know, another 15 minutes. We're 40 minutes minutes in. Can we start this episode? Because I I don't have all night. Yeah. And and I have other stuff I want to talk to you about off recording. Yeah, I'm done. Um, Okay. All right. Welcome, everyone. Episode 85. Ah. Episode uh, 85. The, we, the cold open by Lucas Magnara, everyone. Right. Um, yeah. Welcome, everyone, to Retic Lounge. Is this 85? This, this is, is 80, 80. What? 85. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Epi- episode 85, 15 away from 100. And um, we were just talking off camera about how we're setting the bar for us to start getting good at 160. So if you guys are tuning in now, just wait until we're at 160. We'll be we'll be a decent podcast by now. Just double down on your investment into the retic lounge, and we might actually be entertaining by that point. Right. And if you think about it this way, you only have to waste another year and a half of your life listening to us before we start getting good. So um oh man. So lounging. We're doing a lounging episode. And the whole purpose of this is just to kind of hang out, have loose conversation. Um and uh, talk about retics and anything else that's going on that, I don't know, there's literally no guidance on these. No guidance. I mean, we try to keep it loosely retics, so I guess I'll start off. Mm-hmm. One of my holdbacks that I've been force feeding for the last eight months finally ate on its own, Lucas. <sighs> Was that the last and, one? And... It would, yeah. I mean, all the ones I was force feeding switched over very quick. This was just the last one that was just stubborn, so stubborn. And of course, it's the one that I I, I was looking for in in this clutch. So, yeah, he he's eating. (laughs) That that that's dude the the weight of the world off your no, shoulders I, I so just just so everyone else knows because this is just kind of like a, a me and lucas thing for for right now but as soon as that happened i'm meaning as soon as i close that tub as soon as i put i don't even think i put the tongs in the hook down i think i still had them in my hands when i went into the kitchen I had my hook, my tongs, and my phone in my hand, and I voice memo Lucas, and I go, this thing finally ate. I'm shaking. <laughs> like, I, I couldn't believe that it actually happened. Like, with just that long of force feeding, just, yeah. I've never experienced anything like that, and I was like, this thing's for sure going to end up, like, just a failure to thrive animal at some point, but... I'm a little bit more hopeful now that maybe that's not the case. Yeah. I think that like, I don't know, I've force fed before and it's not fun. It's stressful. And I I feel that like at that point, after eight months, like the excitement and shaking was more because you were so happy that the, you know, you could put it behind you right now. It it makes it miserable, man. I hate it. Um, and And, and trust me i did everything i could every single week that i offered this animal food like it wasn't just like pick this animal up and just robotically force feed it it was like no i'm gonna try every single time no matter how long it takes yeah i to so um i was able to successfully get one of these layers to eat its first meal and it was the most that i've ever the longest that i ever messed around so when I go in there, I'll put it in front of them. I'll wiggle it a little bit. And then if they don't move or aren't really like looking at it, I then, you know, I, I start bouncing it around. After you bounce it around, I start poking them, right? And then just start bouncing around again. And literally just like, you know, you do that. And after doing that for about like a minute, it started like tracking and was following it. And it had its like head cocked. And I was like, all right, at least strike defensively. Like if you're not going to eat and wrap, um, it constantly showed interest 20 minutes. I did that shit for 20 minutes, jabbing it, doing this. I was the longest and I've ever done that for. And it finally freaking took it. That's how this animal was. And it would, it would act interested until you got to the poking phase. And then as soon as you touched it with that animal, yep. It was just pure runner suck, man. Yeah. Uh, so 
you know, luckily this time on the dangle and, you know, dance around a little bit, it finally just exploded the, out of nowhere. On the D and D, the dangle and dance. <laughs> the dangle and dance. Um, yeah. I'm happy for you. That that's huge. Um, and I know that that animal, I mean, that's it's a it's a phantom tiger purple. No, no, no. That that one's been just a absolute hog Savage. this entire time. Uh no, this is just the male purple phantom. Okay. But even at that, at the percentage that your animals are, what, sixty eight point seventy five percent super? It, it was just like I, I wanted just a, a simple the reset the visual recessive plus the, the codom. Yeah, and I mean, that's a that's a big animal for like advancing phantom and albino stuff. I mean, well, and the, I I think the cow stuff. Like, if I want to work that out, like I can get my snow stuff and my cow stuff in the same project. That was kind of the whole mentality yeah. behind the thing. Yeah, that's a huge one. Um, ones like that feel good, but the eight months prior did not. So I, I mean, <laughs> it, let let's see in another, in another eight months, but yeah. I, I'm feeling good right now. Yeah. Um, so I want to, so we're not going to like go into detail about this, but we have an announcement. Drum roll. Oh, nice. Mike picked it up. Okay. Um, so Nathan, you want to share? See, the, the problem is Lucas. I'm not entirely sure what you're bringing up. Oh, the network. The network. What was the other big announcement? Do we have another big announcement? Yes, but we can wait. Okay. Yeah, no, I just, <laughs> I wanted to, I wanted to bring up the network. So, um, you know, and, and the reason why we're not going to go into detail about a lot of this is because there are still some dates in the future that need to be announced. However, um, the Retic Lounge, um, we are going to start networking uh, and calling this network the Reptile Lounge Network. And we are not in a rush. We are not in a hurry. This is never uh, a source of like monetization uh, to bring on new podcasts. Uh, but we are wanting to spread kind of what the Retic Lounge stands for and continue that, which is, you know, education and, and you know, bringing new people in to communities and, and just educating people on different species and things like that. And so we that, are going that curiosity mindset, right? Right. The, you know, hosting the podcast from the sense like we have, and, you know, we're not the experts, but we're going to have people on to talk about things. And, you know, we're, we're going to do this all for, you know, going back to the animals and, and building a community around these different podcasts. So, yeah, we, we do have our first podcast, you know, that I'll share with you guys, but no more information after that. Um, but we are going to be starting the Condra Lounge. Um, and that's going to be airing every two weeks with a TBD start date. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited to um, just kind of start that venture and, and uh, see where it takes us. Um, I, I, I'm interested to see if people reach out. I'm interested to see down the road if there's people within our own Patreon community that, uh, you know, we have people that know every little detail or, or at least like way more than I know any other about like bioactive stuff or uh, colubrids, things like that, that I think would be really cool to bring on. And so listeners and youtube watchers um well this only actually applies to you guys that watch us on youtube um you know we will announce the week before on an episode but we will be changing our youtube page to the reptile lounge network in which the condra lounge and the retic lounge and any potential future uh podcasts that fall under us are all going to be aired under the same YouTube channel. You'll see a little bit of structure change. You'll see a little bit of a playlist change, but you know, ultimately it's still the retic lounge is going to live here. Um, mm -hmm. Condra lounge is going to live here. And Let's get an the, isopod lounge. Let's get someone to talk about. Bugs. Well, and I, I want some more obscure, just like fun, like yeah, BS kind of stuff too. Yeah. Oh. Like that, that's the stuff that brings me joy. Just like, just, irreverent kind of podcast so i i'm hoping we get one or two of those i know lucas and i have some ideas floating around 
you know, in our respective heads about what we want to do and maybe a little break off shows. So yeah, I think it's going to be fun. Yeah. I want to, I'm, I'm, did, did I tell you, I think I told you, I was talking to the discord about it, but did I tell you about the, uh, my idea of the retake nation report? Did I? I so don't like it. It's going to be a once a month where you highlight anything that highlights anything that's done on Facebook in retic groups is not worth it on it, the reptile but, lounge. Network. Hold on. But it, the whole purpose this of is, it is, is comedy. This. The purpose of it is comedy. So we'll, we'll highlight the good stuff that's happening. The people that are breeding cool stuff and everything, it, but then nothing's comedic comedic about highlighting drama. I promise no, they're you. Not, it's not highlighting. Eh, well, we don't need to be a, a, a drama report. It's kind not of a podcast, and that's what that would end up being. I promise no. you, Lucas. No, it would I be. I know comedic. how much fun you have on Facebook, but whoa, I'm getting better. <laughs> this is okay? not that. Don't make jabs at me right now. Be nice. Yeah, I thought it like a green screen behind it. We need to realize like that most of background. our viewers are not on the retic nation. Um, I don't know. I mean, yes, no, I, I think you're wrong there. Would, would you say most of our viewers are retic people? What's the demographic on Facebook? I don't know. Age group. No clue. I really don't. It, it twenty five on the low end, maybe. Okay. And then you're getting into like the fifty five. Are you I don't telling be, me that I don't want to be focused? No, I just don't want to be focusing on a demographic that's aging out. <laughs> You heard it here first, folks. 55 and you're aging out. In terms of <laughs> keeping content current, yes. Oh, man. Whether you've poured your heart and soul into your reptile business or you've just begun your business journey, AE Foundry has you covered with next-level expertise in graphic design, motion graphics, videography, photography, and so much more. If you've been dying for a new logo for your reptile business, motion graphics for your current logo, a new website, or need assistance making your video podcast come to life, then listen carefully. AE Foundry's mission places storytelling at its core. AE Foundry believes that a distinctive story and background are the driving forces that set your brand apart. In today's market, consumers seek more than just products. They crave a connection built on trust with the brands they cherish. AE Foundry is committed to empowering small businesses and fostering authenticity that resonates with their consumers. Reach out to them and let them help you craft a visual narrative that helps establish a genuine and lasting connection with your audience. To contact AE Foundry, email them at aromero at aefoundry.com or on Instagram at aefoundry. When it comes to housing your retics, trust me, you're going to want an enclosure that will be just as strong and durable as your reticulated python. The Heartland Reptile Enclosure is next level tough and will outlive you and your retic by several generations. Heartland Reptile Enclosures are designed and manufactured out of powder-coated aluminum to provide the highest quality and longevity available in the reptile enclosure. What makes them even better is they are lighter than your PVC and plastic enclosures out there and are extremely tough. Stop playing around with plastic enclosures for your large constrictors and step up your enclosure game with the Heartland Reptile Enclosure. To inquire about one of these enclosures, speak to Jordan himself at Heartland Reptiles on Instagram, Facebook, and on TikTok. We also want to thank VivTech Products for being an affiliate sponsor of the Retic Lounge. Stop by VivTech Products for the best UV spectrum lighting on the market that will enhance and improve your snake's overall well being and health. Visit vivtechproducts.com and use the code RETICLOUNGE23 today for 15% off. Again, visit vivtechproducts.com and use our affiliate code RETICLOUNGE23 today for 15% off. Looking for the perfect accessories for your hatchlings or juvenile retics? Look no further than Heli Guy Serpents. Our sponsor, Chris Sexton, is coming in hot with an amazing 3D printer, creating top-notch perches and other caging accessories for your beloved pets. 
Enrich your retics environment with their high-quality products. Use our promo code TRL10 for a 10% discount on your purchase. Visit them today at heliguyserpents.com and start giving your pets the best. Heli Guy Serpents, the premier source for 3D printed caging accessories. Again, that's www.heliguyserpents.com and use our promo code TRL10 for 10% off all of your 3D printed accessories today. But yeah, what, what other announcement were you talking about? For a later episode. For a later episode? Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, you thought I was just going to throw your news under the bus. No. My news? Wait, what news are you talking about? <laughs> Hook, line, I... and sinker, Lucas. Hook, line, and sinker. We're going to move on. I don't know what's <laughs> happening right now. You know, I planted the seed years ago, but apparently you found it on Retake Nation. We only talked about it earlier. Hold on. I'm I'm processing short term right memory loss by Lucas. Goldfish memory is what I like to call it. Um and it's a real thing. Um you know, that's okay because we're not gonna talk about something it. Something we need use to every day with right our now. animals that may incorporate into our podcast. Oh yeah, no. Yeah, we're gonna do that later. Um <laughs> oh my yeah. god. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it makes sense. I get it now. Wait, wait, when you said we talked about it earlier, that was on our Patreon meeting. That was hours ago. Hours. Hours, yeah. That's a long time to remember things. No one else? I, I hope other people can relate to this. I think we talked this. about that beforehand, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, we have two things we could announce. That's how are true. you forgetting the second all right well i remember now but it's not for this episode and, and now i'm really curious what we can announce by me i don't know i thought you had an announcement I, yeah, no. you got me excited nope no announcements here all right <laughs> it's a good episode so far We're starting hot um okay so uh Pausing for a second. Can I talk about this partho baby that I just hatched? 100% partho on it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I put the other male turnate in. Because there was a male in its enclosure. For for three hours in which I was supervising the entire time and she was pissing and bucking and running away and there was absolutely zero locks. Um. Unless in like the short time frame that I went to the kitchen to get a drink and went back into the, I was cleaning and just, I was in the garage for three hours and I decided to pull him out and not leave him overnight. Uh, yeah. It's, she it's wasn't happy. not likely that he got the old wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. Done with only one way. Egg no, popping out. she, she, she was the, um, she's the first female I ever witnessed, like give out true, like don't mess with me vibes um like you know when they say the whole pushing cloaca out and like the blood coming out the cloaca like really intense um signs like that was that was her i mean the only way it could have gotten more intense is if they decided to strike at each other um so yeah she had um i don't know what was it a clutch of 11 pearly whites all of them beautiful um and then there was the lone survival after like 35 days, um, which by the way, we we've talked about the whole, like that first 35 day window in the two clutches that you've incubated. Did like, did you have, did you lose eggs in that first 35 days? Well, the first clutch I had, I had a hundred percent survival rate That's on my hot. eggs. So nice. That, that was lucky. I feel, I don't know. I've had two experiences, so we'll see as the years go on, but um let's see yeah that's only happened to me once too Thir the 30 f i would really have to look back at like pictures and everything of the incubation process but i think i only had one maybe two go bad in this okay. last clutch like fully bad 
Okay. I'm wondering. And it probably was within that time period. I just can't say for certain. Yeah. I mean, I, I very rarely get eggs that die in between day 35 and like the last couple weeks of incubation. Um, for mm -hmm. me, it's always like the first three to four weeks, sometimes pushing it out to five weeks. And then it's always like the last couple weeks. If any weak embryos are in there, or just they, they died at some point in late development, you'll start to see the eggs start to mold over. You've cut one of those type of eggs, right? that like a snake is in there and it's got like that bloody, like gross liquidy ish color. No, just me. Okay. All right. I'm going to roll to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that, that's what it looks like when you I cut, cut one open slightly early just because of dimpling, but that it was alive though, I, right? Yeah, it was alive. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm talking about like when they die in the egg and then you cut it and it's dead in there and it's all Ooh. like a, very reddish gross color it's like someone That's murdered like it inside the egg. decomposition or something already i don't know huh. it's gross though um Doesn't babies sound are cool pleasant. they look like aliens okay um but anyways yeah so she dude this this first time this has ever happened to me she pipped on day 83 84 stayed in the egg until day 91 like what was it doing if it did picked, it have a lot of yolks still left? I mean, that's the thing is like it, it, it did during those days, but I'm wondering like, why'd you pip? Like you clearly had another week to go. Um, that was a first for me. I've never seen them hang out that long in the egg. Uh, however, she's really freaking cool looking. She looks almost like her mom in a lot of senses, which that's the first, you know, out of the, I don't know, thousand partho clutches that I've had. Um, this is the first time where like a baby actually has like really strong features and characteristics. First, of the mom. you said that it didn't look anything like a turnate. Yeah, I didn't think so either. Um, but uh, it came out and it's got the same high whites on the first third of the body, which the mom has, which that's the only turnate that I've seen that has that. Um, and it's got that cool diamond crisscross pattern towards the tail like mom. We'll see how the colors show after the first shed, but so far, no, no signs of, uh, like any neurological or muscle issues. Tongue flick is fine. Everything's fine. Um, so we'll see it. Yeah. I don't want, I don't want any more retakes, but like kind of have a little bit of sentimental connection with this one. What would be your plans with this snake? Breeding wise or Anything just like wise. what to do? Um, yeah, that's a good question. Like it's gonna, so I guess like with partho clutches, especially after talking to Warren Booth last week, um, you know, I am going to definitely wait until this animal is, you know, if I decide to move it out, I'm going to wait until it's about a year old. Um, and if it's thriving out the gecko, like, and it's eating, it's pounding, like you would never be able to know that it, uh, was a partho then I would potentially make it available. Um, you know, I have sold a couple of the ones that were a little weaker out the egg, but then started eating and got really strong to people on our Patreon for like a really, really, really low price because they wanted their first retic. Um, they well, had turn eights are free these days. Yeah, exactly. So I, I don't know. Well, at turn eight crosses for now, but when turn eights are free, um, I guess I'll have to wait till all the free ones are scooped up before I can try to put a price on it. Um, so yeah, I, I, who knows, um, if someone wants just like a pet and it ends up being a little on the slower side and not thriving, um, you know, I, I'll keep it as long as until I can find someone that I trust is not going to try to breed it and literally just wants a pet and fully understands that you know, part of those that struggle out the egg early are likely to not live long. So I got mine that's dying. So that's fun too. You ever watch a snake slowly die and can't do anything about it? A hatchling. Oh yeah, that's true. But not, not anything that I've kept for any length of time. Yeah. Three year. She's three. She turned three in 
in March. This um, is the one we were talking about last week with Dr. Booth. Yeah. Yeah. First snake I ever produced. Um, it's going to suck when she dies, but probably going to happen soon. Well, soon as in like a year or so. All right. Any intervention planned on that? No, I mean, because right now she's moving around okay, and she I see her cruising. Um, but I'm just sticking with the game plan, which is, you know, just feeding her every two to three weeks. I like to see her have a bowel movement before I feed the next one because uh, she always had a tendency to get backed up. So yeah, just, yeah, let her, I don't know. I mean, I can consider euthanization with Dr. Coke if, um, you know, she's alive, but just like not moving. Right. Like that, that's obviously, you know, if there's any signs or symptoms like that. Yeah. Just I'll consider totally it. lethargic. <clears throat> yeah. This got dark. Sorry. <laughs> Snake keeping for you on a larger scale. Um, any other things you want to bring up that were kind of burning on your mind tonight? Um, you know, I sent you a little list. I know you did. I just can't remember. No, me either. And I mean, I didn't remember what we talked about a few hours ago. I sent you that list yesterday, so I'm struggling. Um, so what are our plans in Dallas? Plans in Being Dallas. Is, this is the a retic lounge without retics. Oh, actually, yeah, great segue there. That's a good talk. Um, so Bill's still having his party Friday, actually, I'm going to rewind and make a note for myself to delete that. Um, uh, so Lucas, we're at, well, no one knows 50, where he lives. We've talked about this. We're at one hour, four minutes and 20 seconds. When you said that, I mean, he, one, four twenty. people know. So as long as they don't know where he lives, that's the important part. But um, yeah, he's going to have people over and we're going to still do that Friday. And I would imagine that we're also going to go to the auction. I hope it's small enough that people bring their bathing suits this time. I'll pack mine. Um, I mean, also, I'll pack mine, but I'm not going to have the hope that I did last year. Yeah, no, don't. No. Uh, well, as long I, as we play cornhole and we we get a little redemption game, damn, we are play. I was playing Adler I've, and oh, I've been playing the guy here. like oh, why can I never remember his name? He Alex. just looks so much like Andrew Santino that I can't remember his name. Alex. Alex. Alex Warren. <laughs> he yes. does look like Andrew Santino. He looks so much like him oh, that I man. can't remember his name and it's embarrassing. But that's hilarious. Yeah. We yeah, Bill and he I have to have our he revenge. He definitely practiced. Um but yeah, I, I mean I've been playing here. I don't know about you. I go to Chicken and Pickle and they got cornhole there. No, I, I don't like I have the perfect driveway to to play cornhole i just don't have boards i need to get boards i feel like yeah. that's that's the move this summer yeah i feel like also if like kids were riding their bike and just saw like this like hey, I solo i'm not kidding this, no like just this solo adult male playing no no no, no, back no, no. And forth this is himself. to entice friends to come <laughs> over to my my house in the not nice part of salt lake which is still pretty decent yeah i i think that um you know, I can relate to that. Like, I have to entice people to be my friend. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just like all my friends, like, if we hang out at their house, it's a better setup. No, I get that. And, unless we're riding bikes. Like, my, my house is the bike house, Lucas. Okay, that's like the bike meetup. Yes, everyone okay, cool. else's house is the hang house. Okay. Um, when you do the bike meetup, like, do people come and check out your snakes? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, people that have no interest in reptiles at all. So that that's fun. Yeah. Um end of the night being like, hey, like I know we're just packing our bikes in the car, but if you come inside, you'll see something you've never seen before. I have a uh I got a story to share. So my neighbor, um he a while ago, he like asked me, he's like, Hey, like I noticed that like, you know, you have this 
you know, PVC pipe that drains water out the side of your house. And, you know, I see you with a lot of boxes coming in and everything. And some, like I had a cage, uh, uh, an enclosure delivered. He's like, I saw like this big cage. And I told him, I was like, yeah, I breed snakes. Um, and that was kind of like, we talked a little bit about that. And that was that. Um, fast forward to last week, Friday. Uh, he is cutting the neighbor's grass and he's like, uh, so we stop, we have a conversation and he's like, Hey, you know, if I'm imposing, feel free to say no, but, uh, can I see like your snakes? Um, and I was like, yeah, absolutely. Um, and so as we're like walking to my door, he's like, uh, yeah, I've seen like these people on Instagram that like pull these, like take the eggs away from the mom, <laughs> right? Good old classic. Like I'm like, oh, fucking shit. Yeah. Um, yeah. and then, uh, and so we open up my garage and he goes in, uh, and his face was just like, he was a star. He was shocked. And he's looking around and he's like, like, what do I live next to? No, no. He was just like, oh, so like you really like breed snakes. I was like, yep, got the operation going. Like I have like my shipping boxes and all this kind of stuff. And he's like, yeah, this is like what I see on Instagram. He's like, I thought that you just maybe had some glass aquariums and had like maybe five or six snakes. Yeah. Um, but it was cool. He got to, he held Phil, um, the male Philippine, um, and uh he's got three kids so they're gonna come over next week uh it's always a good experience right yeah i i mean I, i've had good and bad with neighbors oh yeah <laughs> why are you why do you own gators nathan I, I only only preserved in jars but apparently you know when you have your snakes out in the yard you know, they get mistaken for alligators by some elderly neighbors sometimes. Right. But bitch is a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean the the other neighbor kids though that notice the snakes and when they are out, they they would come over all the time and you know, it evolved to a point where they're, you know, catching garter snakes and then ringing my doorbell to show me what they had caught. So Right. Yeah, I Comes like to your house with the I, I like snake. being Look what that. I, got. I like being that guy in the neighborhood, and I like, you know, kind of challenging my neighbors' thoughts of normal everyday life, just because, you know, maybe it'll spark a little bit of inspiration. Yeah, and you know, I would be much more open open with my neighbors too. I only have two that know, um, but the the whole HOA thing kind of scares me. Um, you know, yeah, our, our I, HOA I rent doesn't. And I'm in Salt Lake, so it's just like the only thing I have to worry about is animal control, and I'm following all my laws. Yeah, no. So for me, like, there's nothing that states that I can't um, have snakes, but the wording is that if you have a nuance, a nuance, or, what well, a nuisance. nuisance that yeah if you have a nuisance animal so basically if people are making several complaints um they will ask you to remove it and you'll have i don't know how much i think it's like 30 to 45 days to to remove it and you know my snakes are definitely not noose or nuisance but you know if, if someone does not like <laughs> snakes and it has an irrational fear which is you know the majority of people um i feel like that can easily escalate so i'm kind of just living here on edge i feel like one of your and this is just my experience with animal control so maybe i'm being a little bit bitter but <laughs> uh it, it, in my experience here and where i'm at like it, it seems like your animal would have to do bodily harm to right. someone I mean, else to get taken away we had a we had a dog down the street who attacked two different bikers came after me killed two of my neighbors uh small dogs and still was returned to Jeez. to the owners See, so but... i'm just like i really have to be irresponsible besides just taking these things outside and letting them stretch out in the backyard no like i totally like i mean i i would agree i mean i would even say that you know 
there's not going to be a situation that would come with that. But then there's also kind of like the bias of like, oh, it's a dog. So let's just return it to the versus like, oh, it's a snake. Get a shovel. The way Animal Control described it to me when like they finally got it back at the very end before these neighbors finally moved, which was kind of a relief for the entire little street that I'm on. Um, but they're like, yeah, they the state deems it as you know, personal property. So you can't take away personal property unless there's like bodily harm caused by that physical property. Yeah. And I mean, I can, you know, I'll I'll tell them I have a Walmart permit that says I can keep these. Yeah. I guess physical property destroy and physical property in case of the dog V dog was not enough. No, isn't it crazy that Texas is wild? You you can own any animal. You can own a in the tiger. State of Texas. But it, here's the thing, though. There is a caveat. They they do have rules. Um, I would hope it so. It's it's so much more strict to own a native animal than to own a tiger. Yeah. I thought there were some new laws on big cats, and I hope that there are, but. I mean, possibly, but uh, to my knowledge, right? Like anything that is not from here, you just need an exotics permit or there's like, you know, there's an aquatics permit, right? You need that. Um, But anything that is like native, you have to go through hoops and ladders to be able to own legally. Well, and it sounds like there's city. uh, Yeah, each city has their own. Yeah, city, city issues like. I mean, we we're just talking about Dallas at the start of the episode. Yeah, let's circle back into what are we doing in Dallas? Well, we're we're recording an episode, that's for sure. Yep. Yeah. Um in what format? <laughs> I have no clue. Yeah, maybe pre-recorded, maybe live. Don't know when the live would even coincide with, you know, more than I mean, we we get there Thursday night, I think. I think. When do you get there? I think Thursday night, I think. I'll be there at like eight or nine. But if we stick to a Friday release, it could be possible. But I think that's when we're supposed to be doing other things. Yeah. Um, Friday's pretty free during the day. Like we don't have responsibilities. And I, Barbecue. you know, I, I, I support you, uh, ball python breeders, but. You know, that show didn't need more ball pythons, and it seems like really the only things that are going to be there are bows and ball pythons. Well, I mean, I have a new appreciation for bows. This is my call to all the tree monitor breeders that probably don't listen to our podcast anyway. C- come to Dallas, right? Go vend, please. I mean, it, it's going to be cool to see friends. Um, That's why I don't I'm know. Going what friends aren't going to show because of it. I know there's a couple that are on the fence. They're maybe going just for the hang. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see what it turns out to be. I'm excited to see the new venue like that. That'll be cool. Um, it's it's going to be a one and done. I, I know that they're already trying to find a new place. You have to. I mean, you can't isolate that much of the the industry and still expect a national show to be as big as it once was, especially yeah. when we have like US ARC auctions behind it and like it, it being a fundraising event. Yeah. And if anyone is like, what the hell are y'all talking about? Dallas has pretty strict rules on what you can sell. Right, so the 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 laws to like keep are n- not really. It's it's just like what I think they allow to sell, um, and there's like size and species, and there's they got a whole blacklist. So, um, you know, I am we we will go um, Saturday for at least a little bit, and I am kind of curious to like walk the tables and see what's there. Maybe boots opened up, and maybe we'll find some things that normally weren't there yeah at at very least we'll be uh you know showgirls for jordan over at heartland yeah i'll go sleep in one of his enclosures on the shelf um but yeah i mean ultimately when i go anyways to shows um i don't buy animals at shows i don't 
Um, you know, it's, it's always no. You a, buy animals on the podcast. Exactly. Um, I, I message the guest immediately after and send them my money. But uh, yeah, it's always for the social aspect of it. And even last time I had a blast and we were only at the show for like, what, four hours? If, if that. Exactly. Uh, you, oh, did, you got. Did we go got, two days? You went Sunday morning I to go get the cage from Jordan. Cage. <laughs> The enclosure from Jordan, and you hung out there until I don't know, like noon. Oh no, wait! You drove back with me. You fell asleep in the damn car. I swear, I went two days though. Um, we, went, we went Friday. Oh, we were there early Friday before people were vending, and we we're hanging out with people. And then we went to the auction for like a second. No, what did we do? <laughs> My brain's not okay. This is not good. I, I yeah I don't know it's been it's been a long week uh man I I I know we went two days but one day we were only there for like an hour and a half before we got on the road that's what it was we went the day of the auction we went for like four hours before everything started closing down for the auction and then we went the next day for just a second before heading out and that's when I picked out my art, realized I didn't purchase it before leaving, sending Adler the money, and then Lucas holding my art hostage for, uh, I don't six know, months? six months. Yeah. Um, man, I can't wait for April to get here, so you don't hold that over my head anymore. You know, if if dating isn't hard, hard enough, just have bare walls all over the place and just look like a serial killer when... Okay, you let's let's. I, I I want you guys who are listening. If you if you guys are still listening to this, um, I want you guys to comment down below. If uh, especially women, if you're out there, um, listening to this, I would want to know: Would you rather see a man's home be a man's home with nothing up, or would you rather see it full of reptiles if you were not a reptile person? Uh, these these pictures are not going in the living room. Oh, okay. That's a different story. Yeah. I have different say, like, plans what? for the living room, but like I need to look like I decorate a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think I have three pictures, four pictures in total between my bedroom and my living room hung up. You know what? Do you know it's really easy because it's, like you don't have to worry about like bad taste or good taste. Um, like a mirror, <laughs> put a mirror. I up. know I, I've been in, I've been in search for a mirror. Uh, I had a really nice one. Big clock, right? That's easy. It takes up a lot of wall space. You get like 60 bucks on Amazon. Yeah. Boom. I don't need to stare at a clock. Are you going to stare at art? Yeah. That's much more enjoyable. I can't afford the art that I'd be willing to stare at. Oh, man. Um, so Dallas, hanging out, friends, good time, green tree pythons, no retics. Got Any it. plans coming up this weekend or this week? Because um, it is the weekend. Mm, I can share. Yeah, I mean, so today I just intensively um, had to move a rack to another spot and move cages to Oh, I could talk about my theory with males in my, my season this year. That's okay. what I put that. That's what I messaged you that I couldn't find. And now I'm remembering. Um, is it like breeding aggressiveness that you're talking about? No, it's about, um, so I noticed this year, you know, my ocelot male was a proven breeder. I got him to breed at 12 months old. Mm -hmm. Perfect clutch. Um, just kidding. One egg at the end died. Uh, and it was a male partho. It was a visual ocelot that was in that egg, which is really cool. I'll try to find the pictures. We've done an episode on this. Anyways. Um, and so there would be no reason for him to not want to breed any of the females that I bred him to this year. He showed no interest with the Kaiwadi who was off food for two months. Showed no interest to pure super dwarf Anri that I have here. Um, he did a little arching with her, but no... Like I, I didn't see any locks doesn't mean that it didn't happen. Um, put him in with a turnate, another turnate female, not the partho girl. Um, 
no locks. And I have a theory on why. I think that, so the, my males were, I had moved them around in the second half of the breeding or the second half of the year um, to where their enclosures were facing where the mini split is. They, it wasn't like directly under the mini split, but it was offset to the side. Um, and I think because during winter, you know, it's running heat all the time, even though it's not right in front of it, that it was much warmer in those males enclosures thinking that could potentially be a reason why maybe they just were overheated. You know, there wasn't pushing or any issue, like other signs of like, it was too warm, but maybe. I think you have a couple variables in play too, that you would have to, you know, factor out for that to be a little bit more plausible just you know just the 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 shock of them moving spaces i think could be enough um you're talking like, like moving, moving them areas. in my garage yeah yeah possibly. even without the 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 climate change yeah um yeah possibly uh and you know there's so we're, we're we'll see you know i moved them ahead of time right to like at the end of this breeding season for me um you know, done with pairings for a while. Uh, and I moved them to an area that, you know, was away from the mini split. So we'll see uh, if he shows interest this year and it pans out or, or I don't know, maybe I spent a shit ton of money on an ocelot. He gave me one clutch that was literally just to prove him het, and he didn't. And then he never breeds for me again. Man, I'd be salty. Well, his heads better breed for you. Um, yeah, but they're mainland. Same with him. <laughs> but he's a visual though. Like taking him to like a, you know, the different localities, like you get that. I know. I know. Um, but, we but have... I, I, I don't think that, it, yeah, I think that's a little bit of a pessimistic view on, on things. Yeah. I mean, my season was annoying. At least if the, he's a proven breeder, there's no, no reason for him not to prove again. Um, that's my sarcasm right there. I'm giving you the thumbs up. Um, any but, other screen effects you want to give me some confetti? Let's see. I don't know. I can't do it anymore. The confetti, the balloons, it was the balloons. Oh, it was this, that was the balloons. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So much clearer with your new camera. It's nice, right? Like, again, you know, we're not going to get good until 160. I feel like I shouldn't have the camera set up like this. It shouldn't look this good for only 85. But anyways, that's my theory on, at least with that male in particular. But um, you asked me, not, oh, this weekend. Uh, I just any plans coming up this week? I'm picking up. Uh, that's what I was getting into on why I was doing some work around the garage today. Um, Tuesday, I'm picking up my Pimboras, Sri Lankan females. Uh, outside of that, let's see, crawfish festival next Saturday. I have never had a crawfish. Um, they're good. I like them, but, um, I also don't like it's, it's not enough meat for the work you got to put in. Yeah. That's why you order a bucket of them. Yeah. Well, no, but still it's, it's, that's what I'm saying though. It's way too much work and you're getting little nibs of meat at a time. Okay. Yeah. Missed opportunity there. Nathan. I, I was thinking just you. today, I need to try hot pot. I, I know this is totally just off the rails not anything to do with our podcast but you need to try what your crawfish story made me think that i need to go out and try hot pot hot pot continue what's that no nope is it like fondue stuff like are you talking about like where you put the the like skewers of meat in boiling water i mean you're getting there it's yeah it's like, like an asian wine. it's an asian place you go it has like different broths boiling in the middle of the table yeah I've you done get that. meats and different proteins and you throw them in the pot for a second and mm -hmm. it's good i did i did one with like a wine a red wine boil i don't even yeah, know what to call it just sounds like fondue 
Mm, fondue was for dessert. Was yours like a Chinese place, Asian place? Um, no, but like the French version of it. Yeah, hot pot. I think is more like Asia. It sounds dangerous. Sounds like they're delicious. like they're, like they're giving you the warning on like what you're doing, like hot pot, like <laughs> you you come and you might get burned. I also haven't tried Korean barbecue and there's one across the street from where I work. So I need to do that. I haven't tried that either. And that actually, yeah. I feel like it's the same kind of vibe though. What that you might get burned or you just might cook your food really terribly. Right. I don't know. So there's a place that's actually right down the road from me that has great reviews. Um, just haven't made it out there. Yeah, I think I I think I might go try that Korean barbecue spot if nothing else cuz it's right across the street, but yeah, hot, hot. I'm just high on the list, guys. I'm just I'm I'm <laughs> so like I am not a Texan, right? I've only been I've been here for a while, 8 years now, but you know, moving here and trying barbecue here, I haven't been impressed. Like the you brisket been is to Terry good, Blacks though. But I know, but I mean I've been to I've been to Houston, to Dallas. I've, you know, there's good there's good places here. Um, and I don't know. Or I just, CM Smokehouse. I feel like those are the two that I would want to try. And so, yeah, we had some good barbecue with Phil, but like that, that was good, but that's I not, want good, like classic traditional barbecue, just like no frills, just meat right. smoked for hours and hours on end. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Like the place that we go to, uh, when we, when we're in Dallas or Arlington, we, um, I'm, I'm guessing we're going there again. Yeah. Her, her Tato's her, I think so. Um, but it, I it's, can't it's believe a, I remembered a, that name. It's a Mexican Texas type of bar. So like, again, it's not like good old Texas barbecue, but, um, just, I haven't been impressed. So I feel like, you know, South Carolina, North Carolina, like those places have way better barbecue. And so if Texas can't even have good Texas barbecue. Why am I going to trust her Korean barbecue? There is a barbecue spot down the street for me that does, uh, I believe it's Texas style barbecue and it's just dry rub stuff. And that's better than her Tato's, but it's not that it's better. It's just like that's traditional barbecue over like barbecue fusion. Right. Like I just want like my wings smoked for eight hours. Adler's going to hate the end of this episode. Why? This conversation right here. Talking about food and like no, saying that we don't want to go to her daughter's. No, I'm okay with it, and that that I am I am too. I think it was pretty good. Yeah, if I'm I just were saying, to have my choice, I would go to Terry Black's, and I know there's one in Dallas, so let's oh, think about well, then it. Maybe, boys. yeah, actually, okay. I got I, I vote Nathan's idea, so we're two and two right now. And if we get to Phil before Adler does, Phil just goes with the flow. So we can get a three to one vote easy. Told you Adler's going to hate this episode. Probably. Sorry, buddy. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, uh, it's all I can think about that's going on right now. As yeah, far as snake I mean, wise, any, yeah, I'm trying to think of any updates or things with retakes or, you know, to no surprise, I have more chondros. Ooh. I mean, I'm going to be helping out a first time retic owner setting up an enclosure making sure their parameters are right and just you know give them a little bit of peace of mind before uh bringing over the the snake so i think that's kind of cool especially that he's going to those lengths to make sure everything's right uh but it's local so i i get to monitor this this snake which is even better um are you are you gonna like guide him and have him do it but you watch or are you just going to go there set it up oh no i'm going to help out so he's a touring musician so cool. most likely um if he needs any help while he's touring you have cool friends i have like two here and they're both therapists i could use one of those i don't have any therapist friends besides you but but like that's <laughs> i mean it, it's it's valuable to have but like it, we're we're not cool like you got musician friends and and snake friends and yeah i have punk friends we Barbara all have friends problems. 
Yeah. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, we all have problems. Life is hard. We love you, and we'll see you on the next one, guys. <laughs>